Hello friends, today we are going to be talking about how to make Noita an even more enjoyable game. Well, there's no denying it's an amazing game. Many, including myself, can at times find it to be too difficult, too punishing, or just too chaotic, I suppose. And for others, it may be too easy or too simplistic, leaving a desire for a greater challenge. Luckily, it is possible to make Noita more enjoyable to almost anyone, no matter your skill level. There are two primary ways to improve Noita, in my opinion. The first being based on you and me, the players. The second being altering the game itself via through modding. Noita can become more enjoyable if you change the way you're playing the game and alter some of your goals, perhaps. While yes, the primary objective of the game is to reach the bottom and slay the big boss, it doesn't always have to be. Take some time to slow down and explore the world as a whole. Truly see what each floor has to offer and what makes it unique. Oftentimes, running in Wanza blazing into the next floor isn't the best option and it's going to lead to failure. But that's alright. Sometimes in Noita, failing can be more entertaining than actually succeeding. Noita is a difficult game that takes a lot of time and practice to master. And, even if you have mastered it, the game's going to find a way to get you. It always does. For this reason, I believe it's best to not take the game too seriously, and to be able to laugh at your own misfortunes. The unexpected will happen, and there's not much you can do about that, so you just learn to roll with it. The second method, which I referred to, is modding Noita. It's extremely easy and straightforward. To install mods, all you need to do is go to the Steam Workshop, locate the mods that interest you, click the subscribe button on them, and then enable them in-game. There are hundreds of amazing mods for Noita, but I will just be covering a few that I have some experience with and that have greatly improved my overall Noita experience. The first mod being Starting loadouts. As one would expect, it provides you with different loadouts that you start your run with. Each loadout has unique wands, potions, and perks. The mod allows for more consistent starts and provides the opportunity to test out different builds. Be warned though, some are more dangerous than others. Next we have new enemies and bosses. This mod adds over 160 new enemies to the world that range from passive NPCs, such as these neat little villagers here with houses, to this crazy mushroom demon that just destroys me. Enemies are added to every biome that I'm aware of, and I am yet to discover half the new enemies even with over 20 to 30 hours of playtime. Next, there's Heart Containers. This is a very small mod. It only adds one thing to the game, uh, and that is the chance for enemies to drop hearts or little healing orbs that are green that can be picked up similar to gold. The amount they heal can be changed, but it's fair where it starts out at 10 HP. These containers should allow you to sustain yourself as you descend without needing some insane luck to find spells or to rely on something such as a high C healer. This currently is the most subscribed mod for Noita and truly feels like a quality of life change. I cannot recommend this mod enough, especially if you want to keep the classic feel, but would like the game to be a tad bit easier. You can also enter a menu in the mods settings and change specific drop rates, the amount it heals, you can change whether it is a fixed amount of healing or percentage based, so you can truly control how easy or difficult the game is, if you were to choose to use this mod. Next up we have Goki's Things, which is a rather large mod that adds many different things to the game and allows you to control many different aspects of the game. The first page offers different game modes. Most of them are much more difficult than the standard Noita experience. The next tab offers you 
the ability to change things such as invincibility frames, enable bosses, alter particles, and much, much more. Gokies also has a random start feature, and if ran with starting loadouts, you will spawn with both sets of gear, as well as up to four wands. Oh, seems like a worm is uh, consuming me. That's that's all right. Uh, I personally recommend the unique wands as they can be extremely fun when found, although they are quite rare. In the spells and perks tabs, you're able to enable or disable each individual mod or perk as you desire. The last two important tabs I will cover are the cheats and modifier tabs. The cheats menu allows you to play however you please and to explore the world to your heart's content. The game modifiers are specific alterations that greatly change the pace of the game, typically making it more challenging, but not always. Taking a quick look at some of them, you see there is the floor is lava, limited ammo, complete no-hit runs. If you're looking for more of a challenge, this is definitely what you would want to uh, install and tinker with. It offers a lot of fun opportunities, I believe. If the permadeath aspect of Noita is turning you off from the game, one mod that I would recommend is Dead Isn't Dead. The mod adds many different golden onks to the world, each located in the Holy Mountain, where you would re-roll your perks. Each golden onk adds a respawn point, so that if you were to die, you will simply respawn at that onk. It completely takes away the permadeath aspect, and to my knowledge, there is not a limit to how many times you can respawn, nor is there really any penalty to the death. I can understand how some people may disagree or not like the mod, because it does change a core mechanic of the game in the sense that the game is designed to have permadeath, but, in my opinion, if you enjoy respawning, play the game how you want. It's about having fun. Don't let the opinions of others ruin your good time. The final mod we're going to be taking a look at is known as Conjurer, and it actually adds an entire new game mode. Conjurer is essentially creative mode for Noita. It allows you to summon materials, whether it be solid blocks, liquids, powders, gases, even other objects if you switch to the secondary wand. You can summon entities, whether it be creatures, props, potions, wands, anything that the heart could desire. Let's take some quick looks at just exactly what can be done. So if we go to the first wand, we will select static materials, because, you know, that's solid, essentially. And just build a little home. I'm not too good at building. Perhaps we wanted to fill this with magical mysterious liquid. We can do that. The possibilities truly are endless. It also allows you to explore new mobs and NPCs, uh, perhaps strategize if that's what you're into. One particularly interesting mob that I've only been able to find in an actual run one time is the Golden Slime. And it actually turns things to gold. And this is a real NPC that you can find. <laughs> Over 5,000 gold that quick. I should specify that the mob can actually be found, but it is part of the new mobs and bosses mod that I spoke of earlier. And if you die as such, you just respawn. Perhaps you solely wanted to focus on building. Conjure allows you to do that. Simply toggle, and you leave your body behind and can explore the world. Although I... well, yeah, I don't believe there are any biomes underneath. It's more for building your own levels and tinkering, having fun, I suppose. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed, 
and hopefully you're able to learn a tip or trick that makes you enjoy the game a little bit more for whatever reason. I know, personally, once I stopped being so focused on winning and embraced the fun aspects of losing, I personally enjoyed it more. If you did enjoy, please like and subscribe, maybe leave a comment. Thank you for watching once more, and I'll see you in the next one, friends. Bye!